It is 6.45 a.m. Yeah, it's early. And while I want to claw my way to a score today, after waking up at 4.30 a.m. and not having time to warm up, my first step is to accept some early round jitters. And in fact, I have a proposal. All right, so I say we're all entitled to a breakfast ball. We'll spare the breakfast ball, because the first one is at least in play. But my second swing of the day isn't much better than my first. Yeah. It leaves me above the green here with a really awkward stance. And I don't think I'm going to put good contact on this one, but lo and behold, I do. Thanks. This is going to be a bit of a guess. It winds up over the green, and now my first putt of the day is indeed just a bit of a guess. Get going. It doesn't quite make it, and I'll have a bit of work left for bogey. What a start. Me too. I've added an on-pace section to my score here. Not because I'm actively thinking about it during the round, but rather to demonstrate that you should never think about this either, because you'll see how it changes during the round. And on to the second hole. With water on the left, I know where to miss. Also safe. Double bogeys like we made on the first hole are score killers, and I make sure to take that out of play by missing short right of this green here. Pick a spot out to the right. Inside 100 yards is where I'm most confident. I don't have to be an athlete here, I just focus on visualizing and keeping it simple. Thanks. This one comes up a bit short of my intended target, and I have about 12 feet for par here. Oh. It's no good, and we'll cart a bogey going into the third hole. This is a short hole. I haven't found my driver's swing yet, so I just opt for a hybrid. So 145. You know what, this early, I'm going to hit so much club, I'm going to hit it like 160. I try not to let ego inform my club choice, and it's no surprise to me that most amateurs consistently miss short. Wow, and I took extra club too. In this case, even the six iron wasn't enough. Ooh, sit. And then the chip goes a little long, and you're getting an idea of how this round's starting. Yeah. The key is not letting it get to us. I was ducking. Yikes. That's into that waste area though. So you can whine and moan when you're playing like crap teeing off at 6.45, or you can just keep having fun. Beautiful golf course. I find it funny when reviewing footage that virtually every time I say something positive before a shot, I hit a good one. I'm actually pretty pleased with that. It's hard to see on camera, but ball's way below my feet. 150, still grab an extra club. With the ball below my feet, I'm less than confident over this one, and for the fourth straight hole, we're going to come up short. The bunker effort's fine, and will leave me about 15 feet. Oh. But this one's no good either, and we're still waiting for the first par of the day. All right, can I get a five iron there? The advantage of a tee should be helpful. Indeed, that was helpful. And for the first time today, we've reached our target, and we'll have a putt for birdie. I see this one moving a bit to my right, and I started on the right line. Boy, I've been tentative with them. I'll knock it in for par and finally get off the bogey train. This is my fourth time playing this course on the channel. Maybe. And I've yet to make better than double on this hole. So 112 playing 116. I'm hitting a 140 club. The course knowledge I've gained is to play past the pin and grab an extra club. The course knowledge pays off, and we'll have a putt for birdie. It's not online, though. Well, the weight wasn't the problem. <laughs> but after the rough start, banging in back-to-back -back pars feels good. And on to the par 5 seventh. The trajectory on that one wasn't pretty, but it's in the fairway, and I'm grabbing my 5-wood from 240 here, Thanks. even though that's ambitious. Not going to get 240 in this temp, but these elevated greens are pretty tough to play into. Really need to have the distances dialed. So we got 44 here, and a nice high sandwich. I visualized how I want this one to go, and I execute. Just like that. That should be really good. The birdie putt should just be academic now. That was so pathetic. <laughs> that was terrible. Oh no. Pushed it right off the club face. We'll harness goldfish memory like Ted Lasso. Even John Rahm is referring to that one lately. Thanks. And I thought this was a good drive here. Okay, so note to self when I'm editing this, the pin is between these two palms. Nope, it's in the waste area. And after struggling so many times to make good contact from these lies, I'm thrilled that it's at least green high. Oh, nice touch. Oh, nice. And I knock the chip nice and close and tap in for par. Thanks. On the heels of four straight pars, this is a good sign for me. Thanks. The driver's going straight, and we're getting a bit more out of it. It's finally warmed up, and we're playing decent golf. 65 to a front pin. So I'm going to play back of the green number. But the golf gods take it away. Oh. Just when I jinxed it by saying we're playing good golf. Do I dare attempt a high one? 
I think I have to. Decade Golf preaches never being short-sighted like this, and now I'm attempting a shot that is definitely out of my pay grade. Right idea. Just didn't do it. I'm putting from off the green for par now. It's not so great, and I'll actually have a bit of work to tidy up for bogey here, but thankfully I knock it in. So the front nine started slowly as expected, but the last five holes were certainly a lot better, and I'm hoping to ride this momentum going into the back nine. And first, a little note about how I've been playing lately. My scoring range this summer, I shot a career low 71 at Bandon Dunes, Pacific Dunes, and about two months later, I shot 106 <laughs> at uh, Quintero in Arizona, including a 13 on one hole. The golf game does indeed come and go, and that's why I always stop and appreciate hitting a good shot which is a good time to talk about the sponsor of today's video. If you've been in the market for new clubs recently, you've probably noticed that the prices of drivers have skyrocketed in just a few years. Now, normally if I need new gear and prices are up, I'll just dip into my savings account. But the last year has been historically bad for building wealth. Even banks are failing. And now everybody's trying to find new ways to diversify their investments. And they wanna do it while avoiding the crazy swings of the stock market and the upkeep involved in real estate. Millions of wealthy Americans are generating income with appreciating assets, and now you get a chance to do it too, with practically no legwork. In fact, the platform paid out over $25 million to investors last year. It's called Masterworks, and I first talked about it on the channel last April. Masterworks offers investments in fine art, multi-million dollar hard assets, an asset class that actually appreciated an average of 29% last year according to Barron's. These assets aren't subject to the same shock as other markets, and all of Masterworks' offerings are SEC qualified. And to date, every single one of Masterworks' exits has returned a profit to their investors, with the last three delivering 10, 13, and 35% net returns. It's common for Masterworks' offerings to sell out in days or even hours, but you can get special access to skip the line by using the link in the description. I'm proud to have Masterworks as a channel sponsor, and thanks, Masterworks, for sponsoring this video. So it's only 124, but this ball is so buried. Unfortunately, the drive found some thick rough here, and the best I can do is hack it into this greenside bunker. But I took a good thrash at this. Thanks. It gets reasonably close, and here's the par effort. Oh, <laughs> and let's continue relishing what's going well. The driver is on track. Yeah, that's going to go right to that bunker, isn't it? Nope, a good break here. And remember what I said earlier about not letting ego inform our club selection. We hit an 8-iron from 112 earlier in this round, this time from 140. And now watch Kiwi cheering this putt on. Get going, ball. It's a bit short and I have some work for par, but I knock it in. Another good drive on 12, and that slow start sure feels like it's a ways behind us now. I'll have just a wedge in here, and I thought I hit this one really well. Thanks. But it actually comes up a bit short. Oh, it's short. And as I'm winding up this chip here, I can't help but remember when I had almost the identical shot just about a week ago on this same course. It looked good the whole way, <laughs> and indeed it found the back of the hole. With that in my mind here, I roll this one, but not quite this time. It'll leave me with a few feet left for par, but I knock it in. What do you like, partner? Hard eight or soft seven? We'll go hard eight. Like I said, no ego in club selection. My eight iron's my 140 club, and we decided that the miss short here was better than the miss long. Oh, <laughs> one more foot, eh? I did miss short, but now upon getting here, I see that both the miss short and the miss long leave you with a downhill chip. But I get it close, and then that. It's unfortunate, and we'll take the bogey going into 14, where I'm lucky enough to hit yet another good drive. And here's what I have left in. It's 157 and playing uphill quite a bit. And just a quick zoom out to look at how beautiful this hole is. I think it's the best two-shotter at PGA West. This is my approach, and I thought it was right on line, but it comes up a bit short. And once again, we're going to rely on the wedge to bail us out. And once again, we get it nice and close, and we manage to make this one. The driver is also still cooperating. This is our best of the day, about 260, right down the middle. I'm well past the 250. There's a ballsy shot at the green, but that's stupid. Just advance a five iron. That's the game plan, but poor execution. Uh-oh. That's at a waste area. Yikes. 80 yards. And this is a tough one. Didn't get it clean. And now I'll have the same shot from closer. 40 yards is such a scary number. And the best laid plans on this hole are turning a bit disastrous. Now I'm trying to get up and down from here. 
and once again we hit a good wedge that will leave us nice. just a bit of work. Got that for bogey. It should be straightforward, but yikes. Big time. And just like the last time we played this course, we're opting to play this hole from the tips because it's just such a cool view from here. But it's also a narrow, narrow target from here. That wasn't hit well at all. Wasn't hit well. That's trouble. That's gonna be unplayable. It's gonna be drop. I did have to take a drop here. And after avoiding big blow up holes for a while, we made a double on the last hole and a double here. <laughs> no bother. We'll regather ourselves before the long par 417, where I put a good swing on this one, but I'll still be left with a long way home. I grab the hybrid, and this is my most frequent miss with it. Yeah, a little left. And would you look at this? We've had this shot a few times today. We've often hit it well. Oh. And it's just a short one here for par. That was so bad. <sighs> but we've now done that a few times today. It's a frustrating bogey going into 18. But hey, Thanks. one more good drive is a good way to end the day. That's 221 flat. It's a shame we're into wind. Smooth swing. Leave the rest of the golf gods. It's a little lower than I'd like, but not bad. It's on a good line. And it comes up just a bit short of the green here. Am I too greedy if I have sights set on holing this? For the millionth time we've got this chip, and maybe it was ambitious to hole it, but this is good. I don't think I need to give up the hole. And here goes. <laughs> and here's how it all breaks down. A couple more double squares on the card than I'd like, but after the rough start, I'm more than happy to keep it in the low 80s today. And I hope it's a helpful lesson that no matter how you start, the most important thing is to just keep on grinding.